Hello, I've had my Tesla Model 3 with LFP batteries for just under two years now and it's done 16,600 miles. I'll tell you in a minute about the battery degradation and how I feel about the LF battery in my Tesla. What's good and what's bad. So please stick around if you can and subscribe and like. That would be fantastic. Thanks so much. 16,000 miles doesn't sound very much for a car in two years. I would have done 100,000 miles a few years ago when I was a rep and uh, driving all over the country doing a thousand miles a week. But nowadays I don't use the car every day, uh, some days not at all. I try and walk and cycle if I can. But where we do the most miles is driving on road trips. We've been to Spain, Portugal and up to Scotland from Cornwall a couple of times. So it's mostly road trips rather than day to day driving down to the shops. I must admit, I didn't think my Tesla Model 3 when I ordered it was going to arrive with an LFP battery. I thought I'd have the lead acid uh, and I was planning to be charging between 80-90% all the time. And I was sort of planning around that, seeing how, how I would manage it. Uh, then I realised that I could charge to 100% when it arrived and Tesla recommend that you do charge to 100%. Tesla don't recommend charging to 100% at the superchargers because between 80 and 100% it gets much slower and if everybody did that there would be big queues at the superchargers. Currently for me wherever I go there aren't any although there are often at sort of bank holidays and peak times in the more populated areas of the country but I'm lucky in living in a more quieter part of the country. So the Tesla touchscreen tells you actually when you've got enough charge to get to your destination or to your next charger and encourages you not to charge to 100% at the supercharger. I've always kept numbers and information and data of my cars over the years with petrol and diesel. It used to be miles per gallon overall and now of course uh, it's uh, kilowatts per hour and miles per kilowatt hour. There's hardly any servicing uh, and in fact there's been none at all with the Tesla and there used to be lots and lots of servicing with my diesel and petrol car. I also recorded the maximum range from the touch screen of my Tesla when it arrived and it was 263 miles the day I picked it up. Since then I've kept a very close check and I'll tell you soon what uh, it is now after 16,600 miles. Now Tesla say batteries degrade 12% after 200,000 miles or 321,000 kilometers. And Elon Musk said uh, this year on Twitter, the battery pack on a Model 3 or Y were, is designed to last 1,500 charging cycles, which translate into about 300,000 miles of driving and about 500,000 miles on a long range. Talk News say that after 17,728 miles, the standard range model with an LFP battery was 96.9% or it had dropped 3.1% uh, of degradation and the dip goes to 10% and then will level off. My charge stats on my Tesla app show that I charge 48% of the time at Tesla superchargers, 28% of the time at home and 24% at other chargers. Now some months we don't use the Tesla superchargers at all but then use them considerably on road trips to Portugal, Spain and Scotland. I no longer charge to 100% especially if it's busy but they never are. But I think uh, when I first had the Tesla, I was charging to 100% at superchargers, avoiding uh, my range anxiety. And I never once stopped someone else using it because they were always only about half full. Now I'm much more confident and charge to about 80% at superchargers or when it tells me I've got enough charge for my destination or if it's on a longer trip where the next charger is. Two months ago in a video, I predicted a battery life of 370,000 miles, assuming it remains the same, but it will level off soon, I'm told. So the Tesla has done 16,600 miles, and that's 1,100 miles less than the talk news example. But my degradation is 4.18%, and as my battery is now, 95.82%. 
and that's worse than the talk news example but that would give me still a battery lifespan of 397 thousand miles that's almost 400 thousand miles and i'm sure the car bodywork wouldn't last that long not that i've got any complaints about it it's fantastic it looks great but you you do have to wonder but who knows now it shows the degradation is showing down predicted by tesla uh, and also people who leave comments on this channel overall i like the fact that you can charge the lfp battery to 100 percent at home uh, and that's like adding 50 miles of range on a car that hasn't got the LFP battery where you can only charge to 80 or 90 percent or that is recommended. LFP batteries are environmentally sustainable and don't contain cobalt or nickel. But used materials are easier to source and have a longer and wider operating range and are safer, less prone to fires. They're not green, of course they're not, uh, but they're better than the alternative and things are getting better. There's nothing green about driving the car, I'm not pretending that. Walking is green, riding a bike is green, driving the car is not green, but it's better than using gas and petrol and the harm that that does to the environment. But that's another subject. So the energy density of an LFP battery is lower than that of other common lithium ion battery types. Tesla, Ford, MG, BYD and Volvo are using LFP batteries and more and more are expected to soon. Because of the lower cost, high safety, low toxicity, long cycle life and other factors, LFP batteries market share for EVs is now 31%. That's almost a third. I would buy my Tesla Model 3 again, but I think if I was buying it now, I would consider one that had been used maybe about 40 to 50,000 miles on the clock. What do you think? Thanks for getting this far and please leave your comments below. I do hope you can like and subscribe and please take a look at some of my other videos. And uh, don't forget to take your reusable mug wherever you go. Thanks very much. Uh, take care. See you next time. Bye.